Shalom, this week's Sedra is Sedra's Devarim. Allow me please to explain a couple of concepts. When taking their podium in front of the room, a lecturer represents mastery over the information about to be taught and no more. Students or an, or, or an audience are not looking for anything from their, t- from their lecture other than an, outlook, uh, an expert outlook on their subject that they are interested in. Students look to a Rebbe and a Mora for much more. Students want to see the lessons they are learning personified in their teachers. A Rebbe or a Mora must be more than just experts in the information they teach. They must be the embodiment of the lesson itself. This Devar Torah will examine the ideas of teachers personifying the Torah. In looking at a seeming inconsistency between the earlier recording of the incident of the spies in Sedra Shlach and the recounting of that incident in this week's Sedra, a lesson will be taught about teachers personifying their lessons. The goal of this Devar Torah is to explain to teachers their role as personifiers of the Torah. In Sedrit Shlach, we read of the Jewish people's failure after spying the land and returning with a bad report. Hashem said, How much longer will this evil congregation who are causing to complain against me continue to exist? I have heard the complaints of the Jewish people in the desert. Your your corpses shall fall, your entire number, all those from the age of 20 and up, who were counted because you complained against me. You shall not come into the land, and as for your children, I will bring them there, and they will come to to know the land which you despised. But as for you, you shall die and fall in this desert. The people did not react properly to this decree. Moshe related all these words to the Jewish people, and they mourned greatly. They arose early in the morning, the Chumash says, and ascended to the mountaintop, saying, We are ready to go up to the place which the Lord spoke, for we have sinned. Moshe asked them, Why do you transgress the word of the Lord? It will not succeed. Do not go up, for the Lord is not among you, so you shall be beaten. So you will not be beaten by your enemies, for the Amalekim and the Canaanim are there before you, and you will fall by their sword, for you have turned away from the Lord, and the Lord will not be with you. Yet they defiantly ascended to the mountain top, but the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord and Moshe did not move from the camp. The Amalekim and the Canaanim who, were on, who lived on the mountain came down and smote them, and crushed them, and pursued them until Chorma. In our Sedra, Moshe recounts this incident, but instead of claiming that the command not to ascend the mountain was his own, he attributes it to God. He says, Then you answered and said to me, We have sinned against the Lord. We will go up and fight, according to all that the Lord our God has commanded us. So every one of you girded his weapons, and you prepared yourselves to go up to the mountain. So I spoke to you, but you did not listen. And you rebelled against the command of the Lord, and you acted wickedly and went up to the mountain. How do we understand the contradiction between the initial recording, where the command seems to be Moshe's, and the recounting of the incident, which seems to imply that it was God's actual command? Earlier in the Torah, Hashem commanded Moshe to speak to the rock in order to draw water from it. Rambam explained that when Moshe hit the rock out of anger, the Jewish people got the wrong message. They thought Moshe's anger and frustration at them represented God's judgment of them, and that it was really God who was so upset. Due to forgetting his role and who he represented, Moshe was punished for his anger. Moshe wasn't afforded the luxury of his own emotions, for Moshe's emotions represented God's feelings towards the Jewish people. When Moshe told the Jewish people not to ascend to Eretz Yisrael, he wasn't giving his opinion. He was delivering a message from God. The Torah doesn't have to record that it was Hashem's command not to go up, because it was obvious. If Moshe said it, it was clearly God's command. Just as Moshe Rabbeinu, the Jewish people's quintessential leader, was looked to as the representative of God's message to his people, so too are today's Rabbeinu and Morot looked to as representative of God's message. Teachers must be aware that the choice of words, inflection, and tone convey more than the actual lesson. They speak to God's commands in this world. A teacher must always be wary that their body language and other ancillary factors to the message they intend to convey might be different from the message that students are hearing. It's an important message, one that I hope you take to heart. Shabbat Shalom.